Hello, I'm Melissa Conley-Tyler. I'm the National Executive Director of the Australian Institute of International Affairs and the team leader for the EU Australia Leadership Forum. We're currently in Sydney where the first big event of the EU Australia Leadership Forum is taking place. And we're lucky to have with us Peter Vagis, who is the former Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and an AAA fellow. So it's wonderful to see you here. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Melissa. Great okay. to be here. Well, I understand you're going to be talking on research and innovation. You're new role in post foreign affairs is at the University of, uh, of Queensland as Chancellor. Um, I'm interested in what you see as the opportunities for collaboration in research and innovation between the EU and Australia. Well we're working from a fairly good base and mm -hmm. the question really is how can we strengthen that further yeah. because research and innovation for each of us, for Australia and the EU, is central to our mm. national strategies. I mean you could say it's the new black for public policy. Mm -hmm. Um, now, we have a very close research collaboration with the EU already. I mean, if you look at the metrics in terms of the number of memoranda between Australian universities and research institutions in the EU, if you look at the top 1% of mm -hmm. publications, if you look at citation mm -hmm. rates, all of the, those things show a very healthy um, collaborative relationship. Mm -hmm. But I think what we need to focus on is how Australia can learn more about the downstream ecosystem on mm. research and innovation. So typically Australian research tends to be very good mm -hmm. at breakthroughs and very bad at commercialising the breakthroughs. Mm. I think Europe has a much stronger record of industry participation mm. in translating research into market application. Mm. And of course the venture capital Mm. environment in Europe and Australia are also quite different. Mm. So I hope when we look at this issue in more detail that we could find ways in which our research collaboration can then flow more easily into a collaboration about research, industry, commercialization mm. Mm. and taking product to market. I think I think for Australia at least, that's that's one of the keys. Mm, no, that's very valuable. Um, one thing that's come up a lot in uh, the forum so far is the discussions around the proposed free trade agreement. Yes. So obviously the EU and Australia have recently uh, concluded the scoping exercise. Yeah. And there's a lot of, I think, excitement and interest in, in what that can do for different sectors. Is that somewhere where you think you know, the research and innovation sector can also benefit? Well, whether we, whether we end up with a chapter or a mm -hmm. clause in an FTA, I think ultimately will depend on uh, the shape of the final <coughs> product and the, the dynamic of the negotiations. But all FTAs at their heart are about making it easier to do business. Mm -hmm. And um, whatever we do in an Australia-EU FTA, I would hope that we could address some of the barriers to closer research collaboration, mm -hmm. including labour mobility. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the ease with which absolutely the ease with which we can uh, bring people to mm. Australian universities uh, in order to take up academic and research mm. positions. I mean that's central to our ability to collaborate uh, internationally. And mm. uh, as you know, there's some restrictions being placed on mm. uh, four, five, seven visas, and universities are talking to the government to make sure that. Um, uh, that kind of collaboration is not going to be made mm -hmm. more difficult because there's probably no area of activity in Australia that's more globalised mm. uh, than our university sector. And uh, we would argue that's for the national benefit. And it, it's very much for the national mm. benefit and of course it's mirrored in the EU so mm. I, think, I think this is again an area of, uh, of mutual, mutual interest. Mm. It's interesting, these days you won't have to be so closely involved, but what's your feeling of the prospects for the, the free trade agreement negotiations? Do you think they will be difficult? Do you think they will be sticky? Oh, look, I, I, think, I think all FTA negotiations are difficult in, mm -hmm. their, in, in their different ways. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't think we should be expecting uh, a very quick result. Mm -hmm. um, Australia has traditionally been very ambitious uh, in its FTA agenda. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think in Europe we probably have a partner that also has uh, a record of ambition. Mm. Uh, 
both of which are good things, but it also makes it more difficult to reach uh, the final conclusion. Mm -hmm. So there'll be, there'll be areas of particular sensitivity on each side, and uh, we'll have to, you know, take it as it comes, I think. Mm, as is always the case. As well, is always the case. Uh, yeah. Well, look, thank you again for speaking to us. It's been a delight to speak with the AAA's fellow, Peter Varghese, here at the EU Australia Leadership Forum. And for more insights, please do look at AAA Vision, our YouTube channel, and subscribe to our blog, Australian Outlook. Thank you. Thank you.